Welcome back to B2B Growth. I'm Logan Lyles with Sweetfish Media. Today, I'm joined by Mike Feller. He's the Chief Revenue Officer over at Active Pipe. Mike, welcome to the show. How's it going today? No, good, Logan. Really appreciate you having me. Yeah, absolutely. So Active Pipe, you guys are heavily involved in helping your customers get more out of their email. We're going to be talking about some best practices and strategies around email marketing today. For that sort of context, can you give us a little bit of background, Mike, uh, on yourself and what you and the team at Active Pipe are up to these days? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you know, I myself, I've come from uh, more of a business background, you know, post MBA. I've run a a variety of different businesses across tech, services, consumer products, and really been in the startup space now for eight to 10 years. Uh, So that's a little bit about myself. ActivePipe is a marketing automation platform that's built specific to real estate. Uh, We focus heavily on email and we're a a behavioral driven email platform. So we use data to help really drive what types of communications we send out uh, to clients, as well as having that same data and behavioral data drive action taken at the agent level. So again, very behavioral data-driven email platform. I love it. I think that that approach, that behavioral driven approach that you mentioned there, we're going to circle back a little bit and talk about how how you need to use email differently when it comes to length, context, messaging, that sort of stuff, whether you are going for an appointment, going for a sale, or you're nurturing leads. Before we do that, though, Mike, because you guys are so heavily entrenched in helping your customers use email more effectively, what are some of the trends you're seeing around email effectiveness, especially as it relates to other other channels, um, what's going up, what's going down, what's kind of changing these days in broad sweeping terms? Yeah, you know, it's interesting. You know, email in some ways has this stigma that's been around for a little while. It's not as you know powerful as, as other channels. But the truth is, uh, you know, we just released a white paper recently where we evaluate a lot of different channels. We evaluated uh, social, we evaluated email, we looked at others as well. And I think the biggest takeaway from that uh, research and uh, digging that we did throughout that project was that email still generates the highest ROI. Where you're looking at forty-two dollars generated for every dollar spent, which their other channels really right now can't touch. Uh, and I think that I think generally you start, especially with us being in real estate. I think there's a preconceived notion uh, around with a lot of agents that social may be a little bit more effective when it comes to converting leads. But the truth is, you know, we see a lot of data out there. Uh, McKinsey's published data recently that shows that email is actually 40 times more effective when it comes to converting leads. So, you know, again, the way we look at it is email is not going away. It's still, you know, it's still the, by a wide margin, probably the most heavily used uh, channel uh, when it comes to communicating digitally. But uh, certainly know we're biased, but, you know, I think we feel pretty, pretty strong uh, in that regard. Anytime I get heavy handed with podcasting around here, because we just live and breathe and eat and drink podcasting, I always kind of preface things with that. But, you know, that being said, we're, we're big on LinkedIn as a social channel, especially in B2B, but you've got to think about it holistically, right? There are so many people that initially engage with us through our podcast, through LinkedIn, but where do they inevitably convert? Most often times that's via email, right? And even if it, that is, okay, Okay, drove them to the website. They even if they take a meeting right away, that exchange happens via email. There's now now more nurture can happen where they're seeing us regularly, and so I think they definitely influence each other. But if you're just kind of doing everything else, and like email is this just to the side, unattended part of your marketing mix, then you're going to be in trouble. So totally uh, agree with you there. As we talk about it, Mike, in this white paper, you guys talked a little bit about uh, email that's designed to to capture leads and, and go for that next step versus nurturing. I think you know that concept for a lot of experienced marketers who listen to the show, uh, they kind of understand that. But I think kind of breaking down the trends that you guys see, some best practices, especially the insights that you guys have and all the emails that are sent through through your platform, what are some of the things where you see people maybe getting it wrong, uh, you know, applying best practices on one to the other, or kind of break down that next level for us from the insights you guys are able to glean? Yeah, sure. I think when you look at that whole nurture versus capture equation, it all just comes down to being able to catch uh, the person at the right time and then coming up with relevant content, depending on where they are in the, in the funnel is extremely important. So it's all about relevance, right? 
So for us, it's using actual behavior and how people interact with content to help serve up what do we want to send them next. And so that's what is so at the very core of what we do here. And, and so what ends up happening is as we watch how people can interact with content, you can start to see when people are really starting to engage, really starting to get to that later stage. And at that point, then you can start to build in something compelling calls to action into the email to where you want to actually set up meetings and really help them kind of get to those, those closing stages on the other side of it. And so there's one element of, of this is, you know, understanding where they are and then being able to segment your database uh, based on where you identify them being in the funnel. And because depending on where they are, you want to serve them different types of content. And so being able to segment and take them down different, we call them customer journeys based on where they are and what their interests are, that allows you just to be much more tailored to what they care about right now. And so the reality is a lot of folks, especially in real estate, they may start looking around now, but they're probably not ready to transact in six to nine months, right? And so if you're asking right now, are you ready to list your property? Are you ready to uh, potentially go in and, and purchase a home? That may not necessarily be timely right now, but there are ways where you know, if you, if you, based on their actual behavior, identify that they're probably a little bit earlier on, then you can take them down a much different journey than somebody that's potentially looking to transact the next 30 days. So that's kind of at least how we think about that. But again, it's, it's really that, that marriage between data and how you're using that data to then drive the content to make sure that what you send is highly relevant to the individual receiving it. Yeah, absolutely. I, I'll take another example from mortgage and, and real estate since that's kind of the area that you guys play in a lot, even though most of our listeners are in B2B, but I think there's parallels here. That timing can't just be, oh, it's St. Patrick's Day or, oh, it's 4th of July, especially in the space that you guys serve. I see that a ton of like four, you know, 4th of July barbecue uh, ideas and, and those sorts of things. That sort of timing is just like, oh, that feels about like 10 years old in where your timing and personalization should be, right? And there's, and there's certainly a place for those types of emails. And when you're talking about some of the other channels and in some cases, more of the informal emails like the happy holidays, happy birthday, happy anniversary, I think there's certainly a place for that. But if you're not sending out content that's geared towards actually learning about your database and, and looking at undercover okay, what information can you gather to better serve them and then use that type of information or type of content to supplement those more informal emails, you're missing out on a big opportunity there to build a meaningful relationship with your clients. Yeah. What are some of the data points that you guys are, are recommending to your clients to, to put into their sequences in these nurture campaigns to, I mean, obviously you can see if you serve up three pieces of content, which way they go, right? And, and that's kind of the fork in the road that tells you maybe where they are in the journey. Um, yep. Are there other things that you're recommending, you know, with your tool or others to, hey, if I could get this piece of information, and I'm not asking for a ton, right? When they get into my email database with a 10-part form and, and, and that's it, but if you ask for certain pieces along the way, can you maybe speak to some creative ways you've seen folks be able to segment those journeys or the people going down those journey paths in different ways apart from when they initially come into your database and, and yep. fill out that three field or 10 field or whatever, you know, form at the very beginning. Absolutely. So now I think you're hitting on some of that there, Logan, in that you, you, the use of some interactive surveys can be very powerful, whether that's to welcome a new client to the database, uh, but doing that in an engaging way, it's all about how you do it, right? Uh, you know, there's both, you can have two surveys that sit next to each other. One's very effective because it's much more engaging. Uh, it's much more interactive versus the other one might be a little more stale. So it all goes back to how you're doing it. But the use of interactive surveys can be really a, a powerful one there. We actually have a number of our customers that they call them data hygiene surveys. So if they're missing certain fields of information, whether that's email address, phone number, well, obviously not email address, but phone number, uh, address, you get it, right? Uh, they'll send out these data hygiene surveys to gather that information. The important thing there is that they've actually got their business. One of our customers actually out in Australia, a company called um, by the name of, of Ray White, they're one of the most digitally innovative brands that we've ever come across. And they've got this 
so dialed in that they know that if they have a certain amount of data points on a consumer that in, in the, you know, throughout their entire sphere, that equates to X number of business. So I think surveys can be very powerful. I think incorporating certain levels of behavioral automation are very important. So what I mean by that is really simple ones can be, you know, if you take down a, a, a client down a path based on if they interact with an email, if, if they open an email, let's take them down a certain path. If they don't open an email, they go down a separate one. If they do click on certain calls to action in the email, they go down one. So there are even some pretty simple ways where you could start to think about taking people down different pathways. But where this gets really interesting is if you're actually able to look at, you know, what types of properties they're looking for uh, in a certain neighborhood, um, what type of current listings, when you match that up with other sold listings to interact with, then you can start to identify potentially intent. Like, what are they actually thinking about? What's their likely next move? And then when you think about uh, serving them up, you know, a certain campaign for downsizers or upsizers or first-time home buyers, that's where this can kind of get to that next level of you. Hey everybody, Logan with Sweetfish here. If you've been listening to the show for a while, you know we're big proponents of putting out original organic content on LinkedIn. But one thing that's always been a struggle for a team like ours is to easily track the reach of that LinkedIn content. That's why I was really excited when I heard about Shield the other day from a connection on, you guessed it, LinkedIn. Since our team started using Shield, I've loved how it's let us easily track and analyze the performance of our LinkedIn content without having to manually log it ourselves. It automatically creates reports and generates some dashboards that are incredibly useful to see things like what content's been performing the best and what days of the week are we getting the most engagement and our average views per post. I'd highly suggest you guys check out this tool if you're putting out content on LinkedIn. And if you're not, you should be. It's been a game changer for us. If you go to shieldapp.ai and check out the 10-day free trial, you can even use our promo code, B2B growth to get a 25% discount. Again, that's shieldapp.ai and that promo code is B, the number two, B growth. All one word. All right, let's get back to the show. I love what you're saying there, Mike. The, the last thing I wanted to get your, your thoughts on right now, I think we would be remiss if we didn't talk about the way that you guys are advising your customers to communicate with email with, with sensitivity. You know, with everything going on in the world right now, I, I pulled my LinkedIn community and said, you know, with your marketing and your content strategy, is it uh, business as usual, completely pivoted and gone in an entirely different direction or some sort of mix? And overwhelmingly, everybody picked that third option that it's some sort of mix. You don't want to be so heavy handed with no matter what industry we're in, we can help you with the COVID pandemic, um, but you also don't want to appear tone deaf. So what are some of those things in times like this and, and just in general that you're advising for folks to show sensitivity and some, some tact and care when it comes to the email channel specifically? It's a great question here, Logan. And I think for us, it's very important that now during these times that people, I think, lead with empathy. And I think that also relates to, to email as well. I think this is a time to, to be human, to be genuine, to be personal, because there's so many things that are happening out there that frankly are bigger than business, you know, bigger than uh, some of these things across health and, and, you know, what's going on in the broader state around economy and jobs. And, and people are, you know, truly scared when you're, when you're thinking about trying to communicate to somebody that, you know, they may have somebody in their family that's right now being, you know, has been hospitalized or has just lost a job. There, there are bigger things at play here that, you know, when you're thinking about email, we have to acknowledge that. And, and I think, frankly, the digital strategy that you had three weeks ago doesn't necessarily apply right now because of these circumstances. So I think the times for the more canned emails, the more generalized ones right now, I, I just don't see necessarily a place for that right now. If, if you have an opportunity to balance being very personal, being very real, uh, and also help convey how you can certainly help during this time, I think that's really important. And I think that level of personalization and building that into the email is very, you know, I think it's critical during this time. I can't tell you how many COVID emails I've gotten in my inbox over the past two weeks. And, and it's, it's something where I understand where that's coming from, but there's so much noise out there right now that I think it's really to cut through that 
you have to be genuine, you have to be personal. And it's one of these things where, you know, we actually sent out a survey recently um, just to help just understand, like, how are people, how are people uh, interacting during this time? What are they scared about? What are they concerned about? What are some of the things that are top of mind? Where do they see uh, different digital strategies fitting into this? And we honestly let them tell us. And now we were fortunate that I think we had something overwhelmingly like 92% of people felt they were either going to maintain or double down on their email marketing investment. But, you know, those, which is obviously a very powerful signal, but at the same time, we also, just as impactful, we had some very powerful statements uh, coming from people that took the survey saying how much they just were truly grateful and appreciated that we simply asked and that we were trying to help them through this time where the economy is going through some drastic change, their world is going through drastic change. I think simply doing that as people behind this meant a lot. Yeah, absolutely. I I actually, and this is not to toot my own horn at all, but just to encourage people to take that time to ask those questions, to mix it up and just, you know, I sent very short, quick emails to to our group of customers. Now, you know, based on our model and, and where we are as a business, we don't have hundreds and hundreds of customers, but we do have dozens and dozens, right? Sure. And so it's kind of at that stage of like, you can send out that automated blast of how you doing or whatever. But I sent some very short emails that just said, hey, wow, it's been a very crazy few weeks. How are you doing? Is there anything outside of just business that I might be able to help you with. It got overwhelming responses and people opening up about their quarantine or stay at home routine and and all these sorts of things. And also got feedback from folks because, you know, we're kind of seeing that too, where we're, we're feeling, hey, there are marketers who we serve who are going to be doubling down on podcasting because it's a digital channel that may be replacing events. But the last thing we want to do is send out an email titled, changing your digital strategy because of COVID and sure. some sort of pitch on replacing all your events with podcasting, but it's still a conversation that we're having. And I think the way that you guys are doing is very much the way that we're we're trying to approach it. I don't think any of us are doing it perfectly. We're all in uncharted waters, but the more that we come back to that word that you just said there, empathy, um, and communicate on a real human level, I think uh, the better off we're going to be. Uh, just because you you mentioned that, I've got to uh, give a shout out to the the folks over at BombBomb. Bomb. They're running a campaign right now. If you happen to know anyone in education, uh, if you don't know of BombBomb, Bomb, I mentioned them a lot. Uh, Ethan Butte over there is the co-host of the CX series on, on this show. They help folks send one-to-one personal videos for sales, for marketing, and, and really anyone who wants to communicate face-to-face when you can't. Uh, let a teacher know they are giving away free licenses of their software to anyone in education right now. And just in general, if you are trying to, you know, as Mike said here, be very genuine in your communication, getting face-to-face when you can't be face-to-face because of social distancing uh, might be something Something that that could help you or help someone in that sector right now. So, just wanted to draw that that line of connection there because I know they they work with a lot of folks in the same space as you guys, Mike. Any other parting thoughts as as we round it out and just thinking about email in general before we close out the conversation today? No, I, I think I think we covered most of it. I think the main thing is you know this time uh, it's I think you know email and and really it doesn't even have to be email. I think this is a time to really think about you know, your digital strategy where people are remote, you know, your clients are remote, you're remote and thinking about how do you want to communicate to them and be able to do that in a genuine, uh, helpful way. I mean, I think that's, I think it's just really important that people are thinking about this right now. And the truth is people that really embrace that right now are only going to help uh, their businesses and themselves um, and really kind of help them through this time, but then frankly strengthen their position in the future as well. Yeah, absolutely. I was just talking to a marketer the other day that said, we know that the folks in in our market are not going to be in buy mode for the next three months, but we are focusing on our content strategy and doubling down there because if we are adding value and we are being genuine in our communication and we're showing empathy in this time where we know and our potential buyers know that there's not going to be business done. And that's not to say that everybody's business is on pause for three months because everybody's feeling this differently. But 
if we do that, then we will build so much goodwill in the community that we serve, whether you're, you serve real estate or marketing professionals or agencies, what, whoever you're working with, it's still, as we say here, B2B is still H to H. It's, it's human to human. So lots of good reminders, good thoughts on, on email, Mike. If anybody listening to this uh, is not yet connected with you and the Active Pipe team, what's the best way for them to reach out or stay connected with you guys? Uh, feel free to email me myself. Uh, you know, it's just mike.feller at activepipe.com. So that's probably the easiest way to go about it. I love it. Making it nice and easy. Mike, thank you so much for joining me on the show today. Thank you, Logan. Really appreciate you having me. I hate it when podcasts incessantly ask their listeners for reviews, but I get why they do it because reviews are enormously helpful when you're trying to grow a podcast audience. So here's what we decided to do. If you leave a review for B2B Growth and Apple Podcasts and email me a screenshot of the review to james at sweetfishmedia.com, I'll send you a signed copy of my new book, Content-Based Networking, How to Instantly Connect with Anyone You Want to Know. We get a review, you get a free book. We both win.